I love that song. I just can't get enough of that. Are you ready? All right. All right. Praise God. Let's go to Numbers chapter number 21. Numbers chapter 21. You ready? Turn to your neighbor and say, I am not cursed. I've never been cursed. I have never been cursed. I was under the curse, but I have never been cursed. That's the revelation the United States needs to get. Witchcraft has come into this nation early on, and you know anytime God comes with revelation, Satan always has a byproduct. And we didn't think much about it, but the byproduct was cursing. I'm not talking about what you say with your, I'm not talking about what you, the, the, the little words you use coming out of your mouth when you smash your finger. That's not what we're talking about. We're, talk, we're talking about something that has led us down a path to believe that we are cursed. And we even hear it today that because of the unborn aborted, this nation is cursed. We hear it. We hear it. We conceive it. We get it in our heart and we believe it. Dangerous. Dangerous. It will, it's, it's what stops a move of God. The belief that you are cursed stops a move of God. The belief that you might be cursed because of your actions. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I am not in any way minimizing the death of the unborn. I'm not minimizing that. You know how we stop that? Christians go back to the polls and vote them out. That's how you change that. You won't change it any other way. Take those long-term crooks out of position and put when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. That's scripture. But when the wicked bear rule, the people, what? They mourn. See, we've got to come into some agreement to get to the polls and make some changes. Problem with the church, we can't agree on anything. You know why we can't agree on anything? Because we believe in the curse. We believe in the curse more than we believe in the work of Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you foundation today. Every Christian needs to get this in their spirit and understand. You never were cursed. You lived under the curse of sin, but you yourself were never cursed. This is very important because we have somehow took on a conception, a thought, an idea that while we were yet sinners, we were cursed. The truth is, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Very important. So, uh, yeah, we know Christ died for us. He died for our sin. No. I'm going to show you. We've got to get truth in us so that we can walk forward and walk out of our own bondages. Bondages that we have made. Bondages that we got ourselves wrapped up in. 
We've got to walk out of them, and we've got to start taking over. We are overcomers. We are more than overcomers through Christ Jesus. This place, this, the, the dirt you stand on in this nation was brought about by a Christian doctrine. A belief that we could be free from religion. Not free, freedom of religion, but freedom from religion. And that we would finally have a documentation that would give people the right to walk in the power and the authority of God that he gave us. So now are you ready? Now we're talking about the children of Israel. The Hebrew children. Numbers. They've made their exodus out of Egypt. Okay? Are they born again? Has Christ died on the tree yet? So if there's ever a time that the curse was alive, would it be then? Well, there's something these children of Israel were raised with all their life. Something you were not. Even though you were raised in a Christian nation, you were raised in a different time and, 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 and era you were raised in the dispensation of grace after Christ resurrected and seated in, 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 at the throne and we are seated with him in heavenly places. After all of that, we are raised in a dispensation that we were not taught like the children of, of, of Israel or the Hebrew children. They had an understanding even though, even though, they did not have the gift of salvation. They did not have the gift of, of the Holy Spirit. They did not have the, the washing of the water of the Word. They didn't have all of these things that you have today. They didn't even have the written Word. They had to go someplace and let somebody speak to them. They didn't have a Bible under their bed, under their pillow, at their bedside, on their phone, on the, re, on, on the Internet, in the CD player. They, they didn't have the Bible. All, we got the Bible all around us. We have the Word of God all around us. They didn't have that. Yet they had an understanding that they were chosen. You didn't find God. Some religious demon told you you found God. You didn't find God. He found you. You didn't know where to look to find God. You didn't know how to be righteous. You didn't know. All you heard was what somebody else told you. That you were bad or you were a sinner or you were no good and you tried to do things that were right but you couldn't do them. And then he found you. While you were in your state of sin, sin consciousness, separated from God under the curse but not cursed he found you he found you and that makes you his choice we have to get an understanding again here in the United States that we are chosen that idea conceived in the heart of the Hebrew children gave them something that brought revelation of salvation to us thousands of years later. Watch. Now they did something here. <laughs> How many of you know them children of Israel? Boy, they were Hebrew, Hebrew kids were doing something all the time. Amen? I mean, they were all the time doing something, something stupid. Now, how many of you can relate? <laughs> He's doing something stupid. Why did I do that? <laughs> you know? But they found themselves in a position that's very, very powerful to us today. They were speaking against the voice of God, and they were speaking against God himself. And that produced, in the wilderness, serpents. Serpents that would bite them, and it started killing them. 
And, of course, they ran to Moses. What are we going to do about this? What are you going to do about this, Moses? Moses goes to God, and God says, Go make a serpent out of brass. Have So, first of all, you've got to have people that can work with brass. <laughs> you've got to have people that can draw the minerals out of the... They were intelligent. They, they, had, they, had a, they, they, they were industri- un, un, industrial. And they, 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 they got the brass. They built the serpent. And while all they're doing this, they're still being bitten. Why? Because of their words. Your words produce. And your words can kill you. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. The biggest lie you were ever told. You can pick up a bigger stick and a bigger stone, but words can destroy you. Words have the power to raise you up. Words have the power to bury you. The scars that you have in your life were all developed out of words. Every pain, every anguish, every heartbreak, everything you've ever had going on in your life came out of words. It started with words. Our words are very important. Well, they built this thing and he told, he told Moses, he said, you put that on a pole and you resurrect it out there in the wilderness and anyone who looks at it will be healed. Whew. See, what those children of Israel understood was we're not cursed. They had been taught all their life that anything that hangs on a pole and dies there is cursed and so when they looked at the snake and they looked at the snake that bit them and they looked up at the pole they realized I'm not cursed I'm chosen but it's cursed and because it's cursed it cannot harm me that that activated their faith and by their faith they were made whole immediately are you getting it See, faith was working even back then. Faith is knowing God and knowing what God... See, faith is knowing God and knowing what God says about the situation. And what God said about the situation was, here's the deal. Even though they produced this thing to kill themselves, if they will put it on the tree and resurrect it, they will look at it on the tree. Because of what they've been taught all their life, they will know they are blessed, they are the chosen, and this thing, if it's on a tree, is now cursed, and the curse cannot come nigh them. And they were taught that. We're afraid that the curse can come nigh us because we're still curse-oriented. We still think we might be in the curse. We might be cursed. You're not cursed. We first started here. We first started here. I got, I'd come to church early in the morning. I'd get here before anybody else. And that's the only time. That's when I'd done my studying, not through the week, because I had kids. You know, When you've got kids growing up as a pastor, you can't just take Saturday off. They want to see Dad, you know. So I, I chose to be a dad first and a pastor second. I got here early one day. And I don't know, somebody must have heard about us. And they decided to put an incantation out there of some kind or a little drawing of something out there on that sidewalk and sticks and rocks and that kind of thing. You know what I did to that? Then I walked right on over it, went in the house of God and studied for my service that day. It is under my feet. You can't curse me. I'm not cursed. I'm not under the curse. And you can stand over there and light your little flames and you can, you can do your little incantations and you can speak whatever you want to speak over me, but you can't bless what is cursed and you can't curse what is blessed. And the fear of that should not even come nigh you.
I'm going to show you how it cannot come nigh you. Galatians. Or, yeah, Galatians 3.13. Let's just get some word on this. Is this okay today? I had struggled with that for years. Them children of Israel looking up at that pole. Couldn't understand how that worked and what that had to do with us until just a little while back God started revealing it to me. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now go back over to first, 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Second Corinthians 5.21, He hath made him to be sin. Did you hear that? Christ did not take on your sin and bear your sin to the cross. He was made to be sin. He that, watch this, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse. Go back to, go back to, go back to St. Clinton. Corinthians 5, 21. He, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. He didn't take on sin. He became sin. And that, you say, well, Pastor, tomato, tomato, what's the difference? Huge. It's huge because he became sin. Watch what it says about the curse. Galatians 3.13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse. When Christ went to the cross, the Bible tells us that he was unrecognizable. And that was not just from the beatings. It was because he didn't just take on sickness and disease. He became sickness and disease. He didn't just take on sin. He became sin. He didn't just take on the curse. He became the curse. And then when they put him up on the cross, we can look to him who has become the curse and the curse cannot touch me because I'm the chosen. It has no residual effect to me. That's why it's dangerous when you get saved to spend the rest of your life talking about what the devil did to you. Because God wants to take you from where you were and what the devil tried to do to you so far away from it that people cannot even smell the, 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 the after effects on you. you. You get saved from some terrible issue, some terrible situation, some action you created, some thing you did, and then you go and you spend the rest of your life preaching about what you did. You're reliving your sin every single day and not reliving his righteousness. That'll shorten your life. You won't get all your years because that's not your destiny. Your destiny is tied to the 120 he promised you. You want long life. And, and let me tell you, he said he came to give you life and life abundantly. Okay? Life abundantly is this. Health without money. Now, when you're young, you don't think about this. You get 45, I guarantee you start thinking about it. 50, you really start thinking about it. 55, it bears on your mind. Amen? Because money without health is no good. Health without any money is still no good. See, when we start talking about 120 years that he promised us, 
you, if you, when you start believing that, you know what you will start doing? All of a sudden, you'll start, instead of planning your financial future to die at 85, you'll start planning your financial future to live to 120. Hello? I ain't looking to shut down at 65. I ain't looking to shut down at 85. And that means when I sit down with my financial planner, and those of you children who have never talked to a financial planner, if you hit 16, you already need to be at a financial planner. And, and you parents that may not know that, you come talk to Pat and I, we'll show you how. Because our children went to a financial planner right away. That's right. They worked their way through college, but all through that college years, they had to set aside money for their future. Not their future for college, their future. Because we believe, and we've spoken to those children from the very get-go, believing the curse, you are not cursed. You are blessed. You are chosen. And the one who chose you promised you 120 years, and you better plan for it. Amen. Come on, are we going to do it or not? Huh, are you on board to go all the way? Huh, are you going to get every blessing? I want to get to heaven, Rose, and I want to go with empty pockets. When I got the revelation of this, that's what I told God. I said, okay, God, I'm going, I'm, when I come and I, when, when I meet you face to face, I'm meeting you with empty pockets. What's that mean? I'm going to get everything he had for me down here on earth. I ain't, I ain't coming back. I ain't showing up to him saying, well, you know, I know this was something you gave me, and I know this was, but I never could get that. No, I'm going to get it all. And if you're not careful, I'll get some of yours. Come on. <laughs> you are blessed with the blessing. And the curse cannot come near you if you will look to him who became the curse for you. The sting of death. O oh, death. Where is your victory? Grave? Where's that sting at? Or vice versa. Listen, guys, there's a better life to live. And when we understand the fullness of what happened at that cross, it's fine to get all emotional about it. It's fine to, 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 to wrap your, yourself around all the emotion of the moment. But in that moment, what he became so that it could never come nigh me. Sickness, now, understand this. Sickness is part of the curse. You have to go back where the curse began, and it was in the Garden of Eden. They were destined then to live forever. No sickness, no disease, no lack, no poverty, no misunderstandings of relationships, words clear and holy, understanding fullness, love, acceptance, in its fullness. And Christ died to take us back to that relationship. When you met him, you're going to live forever. You're going to live forever anyway, but you're going to live forever with him. And folks, the promise. I've said for a long time, do you realize if the church would get a hold of the 120 years and live it, do you know how fast we would, we would, we would get the New York Stock Exchange and the Hollywood You'd turn Hollywood over overnight. They're searching for the fountain of youth. And we're living in it, and we don't even know it. Let me tell you, the promises of God are yes and amen. And when we learn to stand in them and walk in them, and we realize that they're real, he's not just putting paper, he's not just taking paper and, and writing on a piece of paper just so you have some fill-in words. Those words are his words, and they are his thoughts. And his thoughts went to pen, 
and paper, and now you can read them, and you can find out what he says and what he means and how what he understand. And you need to understand when you read that Bible, you've got to read it through the eyes of the uncursed. I read that Bible for years under the curse. I was saved, and I, I'd read it, and all I saw in it was what God was going to do to me if I stepped out of line. But when I began to read it through the chosen, <laughs> when I'm his choice, it changes everything. You are his choice. He found you. He chose you. And before he did that, he became the curse. He became sin. He became sickness and disease because all of that is the curse. It's all under the curse. So when you, what you have to understand is when you see the curse operating in your life, and, you know, there's two places we really see it prominently in our lives. One is finances and one is health. Do you realize with what Christ did at the cross and what he paid for Lack is now illegal in your life. I spent most of my younger life crying out to God, why? Why, why are they well off and why am I not? Why do, you, why do you give them money and I don't get any? Why are they doing well and I'm not? Why, are, why do I have this and they don't have it? Because we've accepted the curse, because we've accepted sin preaching. See, I, I, I said this not long ago, and I, I've said it for a long time. It's time for the pastors in America to begin to discern who they're talking to. Church is not the salvation station. And I said it. said it on DVD. I said it, I said it across the world right now. Church is not the salvation station. I'm not saying salvations can't happen at church. But he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's you. You lead them to Christ. Sheep produce sheep. You know what the church is for? The church is for instruction. The church is to build up and edify the body of Christ. That's what the church was built for. And when we really get that turned around and the grace message is planted in your heart, you know what I found? You all are out there telling people about Jesus Christ and your church. You don't talk about me. You talk about this. That you go, oh, you, you, you got to get to high point. We're learning something there. What are we learning? We're learning who we are in Christ. And when we begin that, and you cannot know who you are in Christ without being Christ-focused. And when you become Christ-focused, you will follow Christ. But when you become sin-conscious, you will sin. And when we get in the pulpit and we preach sin messages to Christians, we're making Christians sin-conscious. Because we still walk out that door and fail. And then if we want to magnify that failure, we're going to turn around and fail again. But when we magnify Jesus Christ... You don't have to worry about slipping, tripping, and falling. Unto him is key, able to keep you from falling. He makes your path straight. He rises up the valleys and lowers those mountains. That's what the promise of God says. So that your path is, it might not appear that way. Jason called me the other day. He says, man, that word you gave over me today, the other uh, here a year or so ago, he said, I, I let go of it. I remember it today. He says, and it's, it's working. It's working today in my life. I told him, I said, the day will come. Oh, boy, I just feel God speaking through me when I said it. I said, the day will come when what the devil did to you to try to take you out, people will tell, call you a liar that it ever happened. Because you won't look like it. You won't sound like it. You won't smell like it. You won't, there's no residue of it. See, if I gave you my testimony, you would look at me and say, no, there's no way. 
There's no way. I can't believe it. Because he brought me out. I'm not cursed. I'm not living under the curse. The curse cannot come nigh me because I keep my focus on him. And if it was hung on the tree, then it became the curse and whatever it represented. See, for a moment in time, he hung between heaven and earth and represented everything evil that would destroy us. I can't wait to see him. I don't know if I'll have time for the hug I want to give him, John, for what he's done for me. How he set me free. How he became all that was against me so that it could not come nigh me. Oh, I want to, oh, I want to see him. It just changed the course of that whole old hymn to me. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. Won't it be a day? Huh? Oh, we're going to see him. Amen? I'm just trying to magnify him to the place where he really was so that when you see him, you really know what you're looking at, what he really did for you, you know? Now I want to know him more. If he did that much for me, what does that do to you? Does that take you and cause you to run away from God? No. <laughs> that makes you want to run to him. I want to know you. I want to know the one who set me free. I want to know the one who chose me. I want to know the one who, 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 after all of that, gave me the sweet gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to know the one that gave me the sweet salvation, the freedom. I want to know the one. Hmm. Hallelujah. So if you've been hurt, look to him. If you've been damaged goods, if you've been abused, look to him. Amen? If somebody's told you that the, you're under the curse or, or that, 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 that some of this stuff that's happening to you is because of, of what you did and, and all that, look to him. Because when you accepted him, you became a new creature a new creature, a new creature with a new name and a new destiny. Hallelujah. 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 Old things passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. What about those children that are raised? And I wasn't raising them in church. What about that, Pastor? Oh, I got good news for you power of your words speaking the word of God over them they shall be saved they shall be delivered they shall live and they shall not die and they shall declare the marvelous works of the Lord your power infused with the power the authority you have on this earth infused with the power of the living God speaking those words and then trust those words not your child rearing not your mistakes, not the curse you lived under. You trust the words of the living God coming out of you and you watch them come to Christ. It's your promise. You and your household will be saved. Now how's that going to happen? You think you've got to get to work on that. No, you stay out of it. <laughs> Haven't you done enough? <laughs> Huh, haven't you just done enough? Come on. Look to Him. Remember, He is the Word and the Word is Him. So when you're speaking the Word, and here's a little add-on. You want a little add-on here? Plead the blood of Jesus over your stuff. All the words I spoke over them, children, all the actions I took, all the different disciplinary maneuvers I made trying to make them walk in straight paths, all the, di all the failures that I may have made in divorce or, or, or remarriage or anything like that that I might have messed them up, if the churches I put them in and I raised them up in messed them up, well, Father, I just plead the blood of Jesus over all of it. And 
like a roundup. It destroys the work of the enemy and it infuses fertilizer to the word of God. And you'll start watching those children turn. That's right. Praise God. I love you. But more important, he does. Oh, he loves you. He loves you. Is that all right today? I, I hope you get a better understanding of the work of Christ on the cross today. I hope you understand you are not cursed, but you are chosen. And he became the curse for you. And he became sin for you. And if you recognize it in your life, if it's trying to work on your checkbook, if it's trying to work on your... See, we're getting ready for a financial... I'm sorry, but I got to keep... We're getting ready for a financial crisis. But we don't live in Egypt. We live over in Goshen. See, we're going to have to get fear out of us completely. We are the children of the living God. We'll be standing when everything else has fallen. Praise God. Say it with me. I'll be standing with the devil under my feet after all everything else has fallen. I'll be here by the power of the living God, His Word working in me, filled with His Spirit, washed in His blood. I'll be standing. Amen. Why don't you give Him a hand clap of praise?